1858, Queen Victoria named Ottawa, Ontario as Canada's new capital. The choice was a good one, for Ottawa lies on the border between Canada's two most populous provinces. Yet the very towers of the Parliament buildings look out towards a vast northern region that is still largely unpopulated. Canada is the second largest country in the world in area, but because of climate and land structure, 90% of its people live within 200 miles of the United States border. Surrounding Hudson Bay and covering one-third of the country is a huge formation of ancient rock called the Canadian Shield. It is unsuited for farming, but includes a broad belt rich in timber and minerals. Beyond this is a northern tundra of barren wasteland. Politically, Canada is divided into ten provinces and two territories which are federally administered. More than half of Canada's people live in Quebec and Ontario, the major industrial provinces. By far the greater part of their area is occupied by the shield and hence is sparsely settled. Most of the population is concentrated in the southern regions where there's rich farmland. Here too are the region's major industrial cities. The region is served by one of the world's great waterways, the St. Lawrence River and the Great Lakes from which it flows. Montreal in the province of Quebec is Canada's largest city and a major world port. The city was originally settled by the French, as was all of Quebec province, and the people still retain the French language and many French customs. Quebec City is the capital of Quebec province. Ontario, on the other hand, was pioneered by British and American settlers. Its capital city, Toronto, is Canada's second largest city. The cities are served by a rich agricultural region. In Quebec, many long, narrow farms front the St. Lawrence River. They've been divided among sons of the owners for generations, according to old French custom. Hay and clover for livestock are major crops in both Quebec and Ontario, with oats a close second. Most of the farms in both provinces, however, are highly mechanized. They do not devote large acreage to any one crop. The farms usually are mixed farms, which grow many kinds of crops, including tobacco, vegetables, and fruit. Canada's most important dairy farming area is in this region. Together, Quebec and Ontario produce more milk, butter, and cheese than all the rest of Canada. Most of the agricultural products of Quebec are marketed through cooperative associations run jointly by the farmers. There are also large wholesale produce centers in the cities of both provinces. North of the farm belt lies the Canadian Shield, whose ragged hills, rocky soil, and cold climate defy agriculture and resist man's efforts to settle there. And yet there's immense wealth in its vast forests and its abundant minerals. The bush, as the Canadians call the forest, is an ever-present factor in Canadian life. Cut lumber is a major product of the region. It's produced on hundreds of sawmills scattered throughout the area, some small and some very large. Another important forest product is plywood. Thin sheets of wood are shaved from selected logs. When the log has become rounded, the wood comes off in long sheets. These are glued together in layers with the grain running in alternate directions. A new product of the region is wallboard, made from sawdust and other formerly wasted materials.
The largest single forest product is pulpwood to supply the great paper mills of the region. Quebec and Ontario lead the other provinces of Canada in this industry. It's one of Canada's most important from a world point of view, since Canada as a whole supplies more than half of the world's newsprint. After the logs are thoroughly washed to remove the bark, they are ready to be ground into pulp, which is the raw material from which paper is made. Almost 90% of the newsprint used in the United States is made in Canada, or comes from Canadian pulpwood, mostly from Ontario and Quebec. The industrial provinces are rich in minerals. Ontario is the world's largest producer of nickel. It's found in northern Ontario, together with copper. Copper is found in Quebec too, where there's also the world's largest deposit of asbestos. Other minerals include gold, silver, cobalt, uranium, and great iron ore deposits are being developed. There are a few mining cities in the Canadian Shield, like Sudbury, Ontario, for those who work in the mines and the smelters. Here you see molten gold being poured into molds at Timmins, Ontario. The gold is found there together with silver. For many years, Quebec has been the world's leading producer of asbestos. It's found in the pure state in the Thetford mines south of Quebec City. After processing, it's manufactured into insulating materials and products such as soil pipe, car brake linings, asbestos shingles, and fireproof clothing. Ontario has iron and steel mills at Hamilton and at Sault Ste. Marie. Most of the ore comes by boat from the Lake Superior mines. From iron, steel is made in open hearth furnaces, which are emptied or tapped by removing a clay dam from the open hearth. Some of the steel goes into farm machinery produced in Ontario. Many machines are sent to Canada's prairie provinces. A large car manufacturing industry is centered in southern Ontario. Most of the cars bear the same names as those made in the United States, and the companies are closely associated. Industrial Canada is the scene of much meat packing. In addition to home consumption, Canadian dressed meat finds a ready market in England, and Canadian ham and bacon are world famous for their quality. An important textile industry lies mainly in Quebec. Cotton is gradually giving way to rayon, manufactured in the region in connection with the wood pulp industry. Many of the workers came originally from the nearby farms. The fur industry is the oldest industry of Canada, and many animals are still trapped in the north. The pelts are sent to Montreal for the fur auction, which is of worldwide importance. Many of the furs are shipped from Montreal mainly to London and New York. Since World War II, aeroplane manufacturing has been centered in Montreal and Toronto, and the shipyards in Lausanne, Quebec, have been very active. These yards turn out small warships, icebreakers, and cargo vessels. In Sarnia, north of Detroit, is a fast-growing oil refining industry, using oils from fields recently discovered in Canada's prairie provinces. This oil is also the basic raw material for synthetic rubber and chemicals produced in Sarnia, In the northern Quebec town of Arvida is a large aluminium industry in a region first settled less than a century ago for agriculture and lumbering. 
further evidence of the dynamic nature of Canada's fast-growing industry. Aluminium and other industries depend on power. Although far removed from coal fields, the industrial provinces have abundant low-cost hydroelectric power. Quebec is Canada's leading producer of hydroelectric power, and Ontario ranks second. In addition, the St. Lawrence is a major artery of transport. Montreal marks the river's furthest inland natural port. Originally, ships were halted at Montreal by rapids, which early explorers named La Chine. This is the French name for China, the land they hoped to find. Beyond the rapids of the St. Lawrence, Niagara Falls blocked shipping between Lake Ontario and the other Great Lakes. These and other barriers have since been bypassed by a system of canals and channels which permit ships to travel more than 2,700 miles inland to the western end of Lake Superior. The international locks at Sault Ste. Marie open the passage between Lake Superior and Lake Huron. The Welland Canal bypasses Niagara Falls, and in the Upper St. Lawrence were several canals which today are replaced by new locks and dams in a vast construction program called the St. Lawrence Seaway. The St. Lawrence Seaway and Power Development Program is an international undertaking shared jointly by the United States and Canada. Its purpose is to permit larger ocean-going vessels to reach Canadian and United States ports on the Great Lakes. In addition, the huge power dams greatly increase the available hydroelectric power. The industrial provinces are also centers for Canada's two great transcontinental railway systems. These are the government-owned Canadian National Railways, Canada's largest public enterprise, and the privately owned Canadian Pacific Railway Company. Air transport is also provided largely by a government-owned company, the TransCanada Airlines, now known as Air Canada. Toronto and Montreal have become great centers of air travel. With many ports and a great inland waterway, the industrial provinces are Canada's greatest trading region. Most of the world's nickel and asbestos come from this region, as well as other minerals. But the major exports are newsprint and other forest products. The United States is by far Canada's leading trading partner. Large amounts of wheat are sent to Montreal from Western Canada and then exported to England and other countries. Dairy products and meats are also exported. Major imports include machinery and cars, petroleum and coal, raw cotton, bauxite, the ore from which aluminium is made, and various products of warmer climates. The industrial provinces have helped make Canada one of the world's great trading nations. The historic fort, which marks the original site of Toronto, symbolizes Canada's continuing ties with its British traditions. These have been enriched by the French traditions of Quebec, whose famous hotel Chateau Frontenac looks down on quaint, narrow streets and a people who've maintained their French character for many generations. Today, Canada is a bilingual nation. English and French are both official languages. Quebec is mostly Catholic, while Ontario is mostly Protestant. Both provinces have fine educational facilities, including the University of Montreal. World-famous McGill University, also in Montreal. And the important University of Toronto. Canada's capital symbolizes the union of French and English traditions or it's located on the border between Ontario and Quebec. Behind it is the ever-present Canadian Shield, 
a vast but rich frontier, which has done much to shape the character and economy of Canada's industrial provinces.